Hi folks, welcome back to another episode of Finding Data Friends. We have found a new friend uh, to introduce and to spend some time with today. Uh, Teo, thanks for joining us on the podcast. Uh, hope you're doing well. Do you want to tell us a bit about yourself? Sure, yeah, I'm doing great. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, thanks to both of you. So yes, I have been working in the data world for about 17 years. And uh, some of you might know this is my second career. Um, I was in Merchant Marine for about 11 years, uh, traded all the all over the world, and then uh, working in data for about 17 years right now, mostly in Microsoft Stack. And I was uh, also working on MongoDB for a couple of years in between. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I remember hearing about uh, your career progression from one from one totally different career to data uh, at SQLbit. So that's cool. It's, I was going to say it's almost as if you had both been the same keynote at some point. <laughs> yeah, seems familiar. But yeah, cool. All right. Well, uh, the first question we like to ask on the pod is uh, what your favorite data thing is. So do you want to share us, share that with us and tell us a bit about it? Sure. So I am primarily, you know, I started my career um, in administration and Till now, I think that's my strength uh, is to how to manage a large farm of, uh, you know, different kind of database. You know, now, as we know, we have in Azure on premises and different flavors. But in my core, it's the administration, how to make sure things are running. And I want to know before my customers know when things go wrong. Right? I'm, I'm OK with customers knowing, but I really don't want them to tell me. Yeah. I'd rather tell them that, you know, hey, you know, expect something wrong. So that's something I strive for, uh, uh, you know, and, and that's my strength, I think, and that, that's where I want to stay. And, uh, you know, even with all the changes coming, I think that's still uh, necessary for us to, to you know, to, to work on, to improve. And, and you'll always, you know, find a room for improvement if you want to. Uh, and, uh, of course, you know, and that also involves... Uh, you know, keeping the data safe uh, and uh, losing a single transaction to me is a big deal if it's a production server. I think a lot of people take that lightly. I literally had my boss lost his job in one of my, where I worked for a single transaction that was a healthcare company because we could not retrieve it. And we started copying log file to a secondary storage from that day transaction log file so to to go back to your question it's uh, pure administration that's kind of my my you know my strength and that's what i want to stack awesome very cool yeah i always appreciate the administration uh part i started as a dba and looking after databases making sure the backups are good all that all that stuff and like you said making sure it's all running smoothly if, if no one knows we're there we're doing a good job right yes that's cool it's Basically, people like you making sure people like me don't get too close to the database. Because again, <laughs> all of these words like you've said, stick. I have I have no idea what they what they actually mean. Which is probably be a yeah. good thing. The system, yeah, probably a good thing. Guess. Yeah, smart, very smart. So, how long um, have you been doing uh, administration work, Tayo? Is that the whole the whole time you've been in the data field? Yes, yes. I actually, yes, when I was in graduate school here, I actually only went to graduate school, not really to look cool, just because in US, I noticed one thing. Um, I came here before for other work, but uh, somehow US like their own certification, right? You come from other places, even if you come as a doctor, <laughs> they still want you to have your own certification. Even like, you know, some small trade jobs, you know, they want to take your certification here. <laughs> So I realized I needed to do something. So I went to graduate school to get a degree. And uh, when I was there, they hired me as a C-sharp developer for a three month, just a small project. So I was done with that. So now, but they wanted to keep me. So they said, find something that's open here for a full time. So I saw something associate DBA. And I was actually in graduate school. I was a TA for database for undergrad students. So I thought, you know, these two things are... Similar, if I can, you know, help the undergrad students, maybe I can help them. So I, you know, uh, this gentleman came from Microsoft uh, CAT team. He asked me, uh, you know, what do you know? I said, I don't know much, but if you know, give me a few days, maybe I can help you out. So that's how I started as an administration. And uh, yeah, I stayed there all along. 
And uh, of course, you know, things change right now with cloud, you know, deployment and stuff is different, more automation. Uh, and in between, I had a chance to work with MongoDB for about four years. So, Cool. That's awesome. What, what, what you just described with different places requiring or sticking to their own certifications, it's one of the things that bother me so much or... Because, I mean, th this is not specific to tech. This basically is true for every single industry. Uh, my partner, she works in healthcare. Um, they have the exact same problem. And at the same time, everybody is complaining that um, they don't have enough qualified people to work. We're like, well, there's a ton of people who are qualified. Um, what yeah. up? But yeah. They just haven't exactly. jumped through that one hoop. Uh, exactly. exactly. Yeah, And I, I mean, that's basically like, oh, your driver's license is from a different state. You need to take another test here. I'm like, yeah. Um, I would kind of get that with someone who just potentially started driving for someone that has been driving for 10, 15, 20, whatever years. That's And the same applies to at least make it e I get it if you're like, hey, please take this little test for us. Um, but usually they make you go through the entire mm -hmm. um, learning curve again. So... Uh, one of my um, partners, former colleagues, she moved to the U.S. and um, she's actually a doctor from uh, Germany. Um, they told her, yeah, it would probably take her three to four years until she could actually practice there, even though the hospital um, in the town where she moved to was looking for exactly someone with her qualification skills but couldn't hire her. So wow. whenever I hear stories like that, um, <laughs> that's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Because it's dumb. But anyways, um, who am I to judge, right? So if if you're not fixing data, I mean, I'm, I guess you have all these super smart scripts and processes in place that you don't even have to fix that much because everything fixes itself. But um, even besides that fact, um, if, if you're not working with databases, what is your favorite non-data thing to do? Walking or running or biking. Three move, things. Move. move. Just oh, move. moving. Okay. See, yeah, this is that... what people like to do. They 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 choose one thing that's really broad, like moving, and then they tell us three things that are their favorite. <laughs> yeah. Move. Even even if I'm not moving in the house, you know, do some stuff. Right. Clean this. Do that. I can. Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, you know, Ben. I mean, we ran together, right? And I think Jess. I don't know if you joined us in the beats run. I can't remember, but. Uh, we ran in pass and so yeah, running, biking, uh, and you know, walking. Even in the treadmill, I have a very elaborate setup at home in the basement because you know, in the winter here, you cannot go out, especially on the weekdays. Days are very short, um, so that's what I do. Uh, and um, I also, you know, watch some some documentaries, movies. I'm a history geek for. Uh, especially U.S. history. I went to see the Black History Museum two weeks, three weeks before. I took the children. And I told them, if you do not want to see the museum, do not come near me. You can sit anywhere in the building, but do not bother me. It's my time, right? You always have your time. So they were very nice. They let me like four hours. They will come beside me and just, you know, just make sure that I know they're here. But uh, was was nice to see. So, yeah. So, yeah. But mostly running, biking or walking, that's kind of my... Um, that kind of resets me every day, to be honest with you. And uh, my twins, they will tell each other, get your homework done quickly, because if he cannot go to run, he will become cranky after that. So, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I hear you on that. Moving yeah. definitely keeps me less cranky. Yes. Well, do you yes. train for races or events or anything, or just, just to I move? Do. So Adam Mechanic and I did our first marathon in the same race, 2015. Um, it's called Bay State. It's very close to my home. Um, since then, I haven't done a full marathon, but it also never gets off my head, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I do a lot of half. Um, I did a 10-mile um, uh, two weeks ago. I have a half coming up in October and half in November. So for half, I don't train much anymore. I can run, uh, but the full never goes from my head. Like Sometimes I train up to 18 mile. And then something comes back up and set me back, right? So yeah. I don't know. Uh, so it will probably never go from my head that, you know, should do. And I think it's also my personality that I can actually run a full, I believe, you know, if I do not have a time in my head. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. But in my head, it's like, if I cannot do it in four hours, why even do it, right? So that kind of hold me, right? So that's yeah. my uh, my competitive nature in my head, right? Kind of, you know, and I was even told by trainers, right? You need to run slow on a weekend. I right? don't look at your watch, right? To me, if it goes nine minutes above, right? Then I get like, no, I have to run faster. Then I cannot run for three hours. So it's right. more in my head, to be honest with you. But yeah, so I, I, I do a couple of half every year and some some 10 mile and if there are small races like in my town there's a good cause i'll always go and you know join i don't look at timings or anything you know sometimes they raise money for for some good cause so i'll I'll go there but i wouldn't travel for those very far but locally yes awesome i mean i keep training for a half and by half i mean half a mile on (laughs) these days I restarted my running last year with pay up at the past summit and then this year life got in the way again. So um, how about we restart this again this November and um, maybe next year will be better. How, how about that? Um, yeah, no. Kickstart it again. I haven't given up on myself yet um, with regards to that, but um, yeah, starting no, again I mean, is hard. You talk to any runners, I think everybody has said, even professionals, right? I, you know, I subscribe to Runners World, right? Some fascinating uh, stories, right? How people came back and all. I think uh, I see this as a as, as a lifelong thing now, you know, because I started enjoying it, right? I remember when I started running in 2008, you know, I, was, you know, I would get dressed up, turn on the TV, turn it off, walk. My wife will say, if you either do it, do it, or just change dress and get on with your life. <laughs> like, stop this drama. Like, how long you'll be doing this in the house, right? So, but, you know, then I had also said back. So I think it's, a, like you said, Ben, I mean, there's no reason to give up, right? And I, I mean, I love this. I mean, I cannot think myself, now. if I was not in running, what would I do, right? Because it just, like I said, it resets me after a busy day or, you know, mm-hmm. if you have a stress for yeah. some reason, so. Yeah, that's awesome. But just, so I got a question is, for you. For me? Yes. Okay. Why is it why is it that you're working out? <laughs> why am I working like, out? Oh, what? I only work out for one reason, and that's to eat food, which is a great segue onto our final question. I'm just building you I see, up what, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. So, Tao, our final, final question is... Uh, Early on in the podcast, we accidentally kidnapped some people. And after a few episodes, it turned out it wasn't really kidnapping because they just wanted to get in the van with us. Uh, but then we got hungry. And so now we're asking uh, what your favorite food is that you may want to cook for us or provide. I guess you don't have to cook it. but Yeah. Favorite food. So I also run, you know, people ask me, I said, you know, 50% I run to, you know, decompress, stay, keep in my weight, but other 50% so I can eat good food. So exactly. you know, I, I have to think less when I'm eating, right? So if I I don't have a single favorite food, I always talk people, tell people, don't ask me for, you know, single out a food because, you know, my wife will just tell you that I'm I'm lying because I have so many, right? I love food. So, But if I have to cook one for you, there's a, a, it's a dish we call chili beef. Um, you know, it, if, if you come to my house, probably I'll cook that for you. Because when I cook that, my kids love it. Everybody loves it. And I also have another dessert that I'll cook for you. But again, I said that's why one item will probably be very tough for me to just keep you. So maybe these are the two dishes. That, you know, if you come, uh, I'll, I'll cook for both of you if you ever decide to visit me or, you know, somewhere Perfect. we meet. So, yes. Sounds good. What's the dessert going to be? Just asking for. It'll be with the bread and some, you know probably a evaporated milk or it can be for whole milk but you know we have to burn it for a while and then put some more stuff so fry the bread with the butter and then put the milk on the top let it sit for an hour or two I'm milk, interested. bread and butter um, i'm going to well that that's yeah. two of my favorite i, I foods. can tell you it was the, that's we're coming we're on the way yeah Pack your bag, Ben. <laughs> I'm always ready because whenever I hear stuff like that, um, I don't want to be held up by an unpacked bag. So, um, that's why <laughs> just I always, always got emergen- one ready to go. I got, I got an emergency <laughs> bag. It's <laughs> called emergency food bag that's always sitting right next to me for situations like this. Perfect. Most excellent. 
that gets us already to the end of this week's episode. Thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure to see you. Um, and even though um, we may have met before, um, it was also great learning a bit more about you, stuff that I uh, may not have known before. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Jess. Thanks, everyone. See you next week. Cheers, folks. Bye.